neonatal care, nutrition management of low birth weight and preterm infants. Low birth weight infants are born with a weight below 2.5 kg, gestational period notwithstanding. Preterm infants are born before the completion of 9 months gestational period. Infants born with weight between 1.5 to below 2.5 kg are regarded as low birth weight. Infants born with weights between 1 kg and below 1.5 kg are considered very low birth weight. Very, very low birth weight babies are born weighing less than 1,000 grams. Nutritional risk factors associated with low birth weight and preterm deliveries include maternal underweight before conception, suboptimal antenatal maternal weight gain, weight loss during pregnancy, illnesses during pregnancy, and maternal micronutrient deficiencies before and during pregnancy, just to mention but a few. The goal of nutritional management is to treat or prevent hypoglycemia, hypothermia, and dehydration. To treat or prevent neonatal jaundice, look up for the video I posted previously on nutritional management of neonatal jaundice. To promote growth and development and achieve catch-up growth. To prevent or manage complications associated with low birth weight such as cerebral palsy, meningitis, necrotizing enterocolitis, growth and developmental retardation, and even death. Nutritional management. Initiate exclusive breastfeeding within 30 minutes after delivery. Breastfeeding will help prevent hypoglycemia, hypothermia, and dehydration. Sometimes intravenous dextrose is administered to the infant in cases where there is a clear and confirmed indication that breast milk flow is not available adequately. However, this should be done on a case-to-case -case basis. For low birth weight infants with no prospect of breastfeeding, initiate formula milk immediately within 30 minutes of life. In case of necrotizing enterocolitis, stop all oral including nasogastric feeding and initiate intravenous feeding. Feeding amounts. At day 1 of birth, give 80 ml per kilogram per day of breast milk at a standard frequency like 3 hourly. Then increase this amount by 20 ml every day up to day 7. That is, 80 ml per kilogram per day on day 1, 100 ml per kilogram per day on day 2, 120 ml per kilogram per day on day 3, and so on up to day 7. For example, an infant weighing 1.5 kg will get 80 ml multiplied by 1.5 kg to get 120 ml of EBM in a day. For a 3 hourly frequency, it means that the infant will be fed 8 times in a day, hence per feed the infant will receive 120 ml divided by 8 to give us 15 ml per feed. After day 7, the amount should be increased cautiously based on weight, demand, and as the infant can tolerate. Feeding methods Cup and spoon feeding Since the infant is too small to breastfeed, express the breast milk and feed the infant direct from the cup or by cup and spoon until such a time when the infant can be able to suckle direct from the mother's breast. Nasogastric feeding. For very low and very very low birth weight infants and sick neonates, insert a nasogastric tube. Parental feeding. The intravenous route can be used to administer dextrose and other parental and maintenance fluids as need arises. Nutrition supplementation. Two weeks after delivery, administer micronutrient supplementation. Some of the recommended micronutrients include folate, 
ferrous, calcium, zinc, vitamin D3, magnesium, and multivitamins, among others. The doses for these supplements should be based on existing policy, but you could give 2.5 mils once daily for 3 to 6 months. Again, always refer to existing supplementation protocols. Some syrups come in combination of two or more micronutrients. Twins should be given equal attention so that none is disadvantaged as far as nutrition care is concerned. Finally, low birth weight and preterm infants are capable of growing and developing to full capacity and potential like any other infant as long as they are given the care and attention they deserve. Nutrition is the key to unlocking, guiding and attaining this potential. Do not bottle feed the infant.